Hey again, I'm Yara Willard, and today I want to take you on a herbal adventure to a really special place. We're going to Innisfree Farm to learn from herbalist Chanchel Cabrera, the owner of Innisfree, and find out how she got going creating this amazing place. So come along. I don't know that it was a decision as much as a heart felt something I had to do. I knew this from, from the beginning. I always knew I'd have this herb gardens and teaching and... So you felt you know. pulled to I come? I felt pulled all the years in the city, all the years with Gaia Garden Herbal Apothecary, mm. rainy city, pavements, dreaming yeah. of this little piece of land. I see herbal medicine as a big thing. It's not mm. just a bunch of potions in a bottle. Mm -hmm. It's not just extracts or pills. And it's not just clinic, it's growing, harvesting, it's just being in nature. We run a lot of different programs for people of all sorts of challenges in their life or in their um, world that come and garden here in different settings. Sometimes it's just sitting to enjoy, sometimes mm. it's quite active. We've had a lot of different folks come to work here that gain what they need from being here. So we have about eight to ten interns a year. They live in with us, they learn with us, work with us, share our home and our food, three months at a time. Now we have a lot of other folks that come through, volunteers that come for sometimes two days a week, sometimes four days a week, sometimes sporadically, just all sorts of folks come through. So I understand that you put a lot of intention into each of these gardens that you've created for a specific purpose. Yes, so this garden is the apothecary garden and it is designed by the body systems. So the hoops of the heart, the hoops of the lungs, hoops of the kidneys. So it's a teaching wow. garden. It's also a useful resource in our community. If people need plant medicine, then it is growing here. We are a seed bank, we save seed and collect seed, but the healthiest seed is the one that's growing. Every year these things are growing up and they're available for people if they need medicine. I try and keep it in the in the body systems because it's a teaching garden. I can bring students, I can bring patients in here. Mm. And part of the therapy is just being with the plants. Part of the therapy is just being with the plants. Sometimes I have them meditate with a certain plant that's a key plant in their formula. You know, we can talk about what's in their medicines so they understand mm. it better. And even sometimes take a cutting home, grow it, just even on a windowsill to have a relationship with the medicine. It doesn't wow. even have to be that they're going to make that. Although there's some plants they could easily make their own stuff from. Sometimes I have patients arrive early or stay a bit late so that they can walk the labyrinth, mm. especially arriving early and walking before the appointment, so they have clarified their intentions in the labyrinth before they come into the session. You grow all kinds of herbs, I don't you? I grow all kinds of herbs. We've got a couple of hundred medicinal plants here now, and some of them are very obvious and common, like burdock and yellow dock, which I'm growing in this garden, although everybody thinks they're weeds. I'm like, no, 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 we have not forgotten to weed those ones. It's <laughs> deliberate. But then I have some like this, which is quite an unusual plant. Here is the name, marrow root, sometimes called luzia. And this is a plant that came from Russia. And the root is a very, very strong adaptogen. So it gives you strength and energy and endurance, builds up the adrenals. It's very anabolic. In fact, with this herb, you have to pulse it three weeks on a week off because wow. it's so building and stimulating. If somebody came in and they had digestive issues, you could take them out to this bed and show them all the plants that could be useful for them. You bet. There's a whole pharmacopoeia right here. Hmm. This, this garden is my dispensary, really. I, purchase products from you of course but if I needed to I could run my whole clinic out of this garden and anybody really could have a garden like this I mean and I know it looks like a great garden but we've been at it a few years this is five years now and we built the soil from nothing I don't reckon to be any special gardener I just feed the soil Cornucopia, isn't it? We've got a little bit of everything in here and I have to say it's not that difficult. We started with very poor soil. There was nothing, absolutely nothing. Actually this was a gravel area mm. here. So we built very good soil, put in healthy plants, water them, weed them, love them, set the intention and 
it's not that difficult. Anybody really could do this. Is this a sustainable way to create herbalism? I think that anybody who wants to practice herbal medicine should have access to their own product that you can grow it because that's the only sustainable source of medicine. If you don't mm. grow it, then you're buying it. You're relying on transportation, packaging, marketing. Growing it is really the most sustainable way to do medicine. From a grower herself, from someone who owned a dispensary turned into a farmer, Chanchal Cabrera, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> so good to come to the garden. Jedi video series. Do you want to learn more about nature? What we want to do this spring is create some of the best, fun, awesome, and edutaining herbal videos we can. We're trying to connect people deeper with plant spirit.